One, two, testing. Is that okay? Not too loud? I feel like Madonna. Give it another few minutes. Good afternoon. Great to see you all. Thank you all for joining the session with me today. I do really appreciate it. My name is Mark Holton, Business Development Manager for IS Corp. Um, I'm going to start just with something a little off, off, a little bit different, I think. Um, this is around Sassify and your open edge application. But I'm going to start by saying I actually love working at IS Corp. Um, been in the IT industry now 30 years, as you can probably tell. Um, the last five with IS Corp, and there's two main reasons for that. It's the people I work with, the technical people specifically, commercial as well, but technical. They, you know, people come to work at IS Corp on a technical level, they don't leave, um, so the continuity is there. Um, but the technical people working with ISVs, you know, want to succeed for them. You know, there's a drive, there's a passion there. They, they want to win together. Um, and being a commercial guy, that's actually really helpful for me as well. But it's also working with the ISVs and watching them grow, watching their clients grow with them um, and succeeding together. So I don't get the, uh, the Sunday night blues uh, or the Monday morning, you know, not want to go in or, or work again. But um, I maybe didn't feel like that this morning at six o'clock when I got to the hotel at past three. But hey, we can go. OK, as mentioned, this probably won't take the hour. In fact, I'm sure it won't take the hour. Um, bit of an introduction. Touch on progress and IS Corp. Uh, why cloud and IS Corp differences? I've got some client success stories, you know, after I've spoken, talk through what actually, actually happened with clients and then discussions and questions and answers afterwards. But please feel free at any point to stop me if I talk too quickly, which is, if it is known, um, or if there's anything that's not clear, please stop me. And also, if there's anyone in your organisation that you think would be a benefit for to talk to directly, please let me know. Happy to have a one-on-one -on -one session or come and visit us over the booth. <clears throat> okay, so there's three of us here for this session, uh, for, for the event. Uh, myself, Mark Holton, Business Development Manager for Amir, as mentioned. We've also got Mike Weber, who's the President, CEO and Founder of IS Corp. And we've got Larry Hitchcock, who's Managing Director of Strate uh, Strategic Partnerships. They'll both be around a little bit later. I'm kind of glad they're not here now, if I'm honest. 
Um, we've also got a whole plethora of team, obviously, that sits behind these guys. Um, so from a technical, commercial perspective, we can align you with the right people. Okay, a very short introduction to IS Corp, and we'll go a little bit further uh, in a moment. So IS Corp is a um, privately owned business. Um, we're a provider of custom design, managed cloud, cloud, cloud hosting services, and we're born out of the rigorous requirements of the financial services industry in 1987. Um, all our data centers are fully tier three, SOC and ISO order. We've got three in the US, one in London, and one around the corner in Amsterdam. <clears throat> a little bit more of a deeper dive into IS Corp. So for 25 years, IS Corp has been helping companies tra uh, transition to SaaS, software as a service. We engage at the executive level, solving pricing, sales, and enabling end user adoption. The relationship with Progress started in, started in 1999, so as you can imagine, we've worked at Progress for an awful long time. Today, the platform supports thousands of production o Progress Open Edge databases, serving over 3 million end users globally. And our primary focus is independent software vendors, ISVs. And we always, whenever I speak about this for a presentation, we always class our ISVs as partners and their clients as our clients. You'll come on to see that a bit more later on. <clears throat> okay, so a few of the problems we serve, just a few bullets and I'll, I'll talk to them and each of them will hopefully be borne out as we go through the presentation. So in the first instance, yes, we host, we support, we secure, all the things you'd very much expect. But what we also do, I believe very well, is business enablement. So executive consulting on business plans to design, deliver cloud-enabled services and software as a service. This for me was one of the most important, important points and what we find is very real helpful with a lot of ISVs. We align the ISVs go to market in terms of cost commercially. So what that means is if you charge your client per click, per user, transaction, revenue share, we can align our bill of meeting to you. So for example, you've got a client that's got 40 users of your application on the platform this month. Next month they go to 45, the following month the bill will go up slightly. If they're a seasonal business and drop down to 20 the month after, the bill will, will um, react accordingly. We find that very useful for seasonal business and for, for certain industries that have you know, peaks and troughs. So you haven't got, you know, you, you, we get paid when you guys get paid. <clears throat> okay, flexible agreements. So we can second party, third party, white label us at your free will. Um, and we always like to be seen as the extension of your team. So turnkey and high touch. So for every ISV we work with, we always, we always have at least two dedicated product managers. And the reason we do that is, jumping on this application aware piece, is that we want to understand the application. You know, we, yeah, we understand it's hosted, we, we, know, we know that the environment needs to be available all the time, but we want to go further than that. We want to take everything to the application level. So what we find is we, we have two, uh, um, to at least two uh, members of our team that work close to your technical team to understand everything to an application level. And our, all of our SLAs are wrapped to the end user. So we don't offer hosting SLAs, we offer you know, the, memory, you know, the green blinky lights are still on in the data center, so it's working. No, we go all the way to application level. Um, experience and trusted, 20 years progress open edge experience with a 95% customer ret uh, retention since our inception, which we're extremely proud of. And de-risk the IS, ISV experience, no risk pilot environments. We, we heard this morning, anyone that was in the session, that 11.7 over year, 11.7 uh, support end of uh, end August 2025. We've got someone in the room actually, we've, we've done something similar with where we've taken their application onto our platform. Essentially what we normally do is, you know, what's the online, what's the on-premise offering? We take the on-premise offering, we pick it up, we put it into our DC, we offer a, a, um, a POC environment, a demonstration environment, where your engineers can test and test your client. And if, you've got, if you're moving up from 11.7 to 12, let's run it alongside, completely de-risk that for your customer. And you'll be delighted to know all of our POCs are completely free of charge. And compliance. This has been um, huge for, for us in the UK, probably a little bit more, but, but it, it comes across ev everywhere. Um, in terms of compliance, so we work with quite a few ISVs in the UK that work with public sector bodies, so county councils, etc., uh, health as well. And a lot of them need ISO accreditation, which they haven't got, so they can actually piggyback our accreditation and actually expand their business and actually go for different markets. 
Okay, a little bit about our timeline of who we are. So we've been around 35 years, very proud of that, celebrating that. So 1987, Inception, founded by Mike Weber as a systems integrator. This is kind of one of, the, the, one of my preferred lines in this presentation. So in 1995, Service Bureau, IS Corp transitioned to Service Bureau, first pass customers come online. So we were actually managing cloud computing before it was called cloud computing. And the progress relationship is absolutely key for us. We've come up with six DBAs on staff, which we'll come on to in, in a moment. But, you know, for us, you know, we understand progress and the way progress work. To a point we actually formed in 2004, a dedicated progress practice established and for formalised. As you can see, as we go through the timeline, partnership service provider, um, for formally st uh, partner status formalised in 2016. 2018, value add, IS Corp becomes progress designated hosting provider in US. And then 2019, we got feet on the street. We got our first EMEA only client um, and out of our DC in Lond London, Heathrow, London. And because of the growth over the last few years and something called Brexit, we've had to actually, we've actually grown. We've actually got another data centre in mainland Europe now, actually in Amsterdam, just around the corner. <clears throat> Okay, a little bit more now about progress and the IS Corp relationship. So, as mentioned, six is actually seven now, DB, DB, um, DBAs on staff, with an average of 15 years' experience. I alluded at the beginning, you know, people come and start working for IS Corp and they don't leave. I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> um, and, and some of them are 20 years plus. So, you know, we've got a, a multi business cloud for quick starter, for progress at OE, quick starter. Some of the IS Corp progress uh, partnership investment, um, we, you know, we, we're here. <laughs> um, we've got executive engagement at Yogish level um, in terms of Mike Weber. Gold sponsorship of the next pub. We're off to Vegas um, for the next event. We, often, we do sports as well. So Mike Weber, owner, is a, is a keen cyclist. And we've done some um, sports sponsorship, with, uh, joint sports sponsorship with ourselves and, and progress. We also um, often engage with our ISVs. So, so it's a particular ISV called Skyward out of the US. They look after schools, school districts, and we often go along with their seminars, their webinars, and support them as well. And we run many webinars throughout the year, three, four a year in each region with, with different elements of the progress teams. There are some case studies that are available on our site as well. Okay. <clears throat> so why cloud? I think most of you agree, you know, it's the way the world's moving and we're, we're seeing a lot, of, a lot of moves to cloud. I think COVID and, and the horrific lockdown situation fast-tracked that somewhat. Um, but these are a few of the triggers that we've seen and we see daily on reasons why people move to cloud. Uh, aging hardware, running out of date, unpowered hardware, you know, it's, it's the age-old adage, can we get the replacement, do we need to replace hardware? Um, and there's obviously an unknown cost associated to that. Security concerns. We know where we are with that, right, in terms of ransomware and all the malicious things that go on in the world today. So security operations are not a core competency within your team or your client's team. We're absolutely here to help there. And people constraints. You can't hire, maintain the right staff, um, holiday cover. You know, there's, there's various reasons in terms of, you know, your business may uh, grow exponentially. We're here to help there. And a really important one for me is order to live. So fast track your time from when you award to actually get live into production. Um, we've seen that, and I've got that on a case study in a moment with regards to, I think it was the Impala project. The, the difference, you know, uh, uh, you come across an opportunity, a particular client may want to look at your application, may want to try your application. You've then got to think about getting hardware to site, you've got to get an engineer to site to install the hardware, um, to testing. Something doesn't arrive on time, the engineer has to come back. You know, we can fast track, but Impala, which I'll come on to at the end, was um, you know, a six to nine month deployment from award. We're now down to six to seven weeks for this client. It means they can you know, turn, turn business around quicker and get revenue quicker into their business. An upgrade opportunity, you know, get to the version, uh, get to the latest version of the cloud migration while leaving product intact. So push updates out, important critical updates out, where you may have to attend site for, for other, if you need to do this. And put focus back on your business. You've got better things to ensure than spending your IT resources on security compliance. That's what we're good at. 
And then another massive one for me is OPEX versus CAPEX. You know, three and five year hardware recycles. You're speaking to clients that you know, may want to take an application, may want to upgrade or have a new application. There's a lot of training costs there. You know, on top of that, new hardware, all of a sudden the financial director, you think you're moving forward and you're pushing your application into a new client and the financial director may put a, a, a stop on that. So, you know, OPEX versus CAPEX means you can spread them costs with us. Okay, cloud defined then. So public versus private. So we all know the likes on the left hand side, I'm sure, AWS, Google, Azure. I've kind of alluded to it at the beginning of the presentation around managing all the way up to application level. You know, for, for us, it's dedicated compute resource suited for secure confidential information, data location guaranteed, it's client choice, and access through secure private links. So three main, main scenarios we come across and in the market as we see today. Obviously the on-premise situation where in effect you're on the hook for everything. You've then got the middle section which is what we call the unmanaged cloud service. So absolutely you can go a little bit higher or a little bit lower on the stack with some of the people we've mentioned before. But essentially and again the customer I'll come on to a little bit later called Cortec. This was a major issue for them. Their client was pushing very hard around service level agreements and in terms of uptimes and they could only guarantee what actually AWS would offer them. So there was a real, there was between a rock and a hard place of moving to cloud or trying to stay on premise. We've alleviated that. We don't think that's good enough. So from our side, as mentioned, we, there's always two streams whenever we start working with an ISV. There's a technical stream. The technical guys will understand the application. They'll build it together. they knock it down. they rebuild it back up. So we understand it to, you know, to the application level. What's the consumer expecting? Then there's a commercial stream. Okay, how, does your, how do your clients consume the product? How, you know, how, how is it built? Let's work a billing meter out jointly. Oops. So a few industries. Um, financial services, um, I mentioned this right at the top, it's where we were born out of. Uh, 30 of the top 50 financial institutions in the US have an application on our platform. 30 out of the top 50. So you, as you can imagine, working with financial institutions, um, compliance, governance, security is all paramount. So that's, that's the core foundation of our business. Um, healthcare, um, obviously there's lots of rules and regulations around healthcare and especially around data. Um, so we've got HIPAA uh, license for, for healthcare. Education, 2,000 plus school district globally, that's nearly 2,500 now actually. Um, globally, online courses, training, applications for professionals. So we're able to very, very, in terms of Skyward, which is a huge customer of ours in the US, they have a, 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 an application that uh, monitors schools, uh, uh, students, uh, I'll start that again, monitor students' um, registrations and changing, changing the way that students move around schools. So we manage that whole piece from, from end to end. Manufacturing is a huge part of our business. We work with def lots of different stock control, uh, uh, MRP, ERP systems. Um, and um, you know, we find with these guys, you know, it needs to be up, it needs to be available all the time. And so if anything ever goes down, it's a major impact to them and their clients. And then fast moving consumer goods. Um, we've got some household names. Um, there's, a, there's a logo slide, as you probably expect, coming up in a moment. We just actually, Thursday of last week, secured Tropicana Brands Group globally. So they've, Tropicana Brands Group, which is made up of Cavita, Tropicana, Naked Juice, Capello, um, broke away from PepsiCo uh, probably about eight, nine months ago now. And we've just secured their whole hosting for their infrastructure worldwide. Um, and it's actually on this week that we're actually doing all the moves, so I'm kind of glad I'm here. <clears throat> okay, I did touch on this, but just, just to reiterate really, security and compliance. Again, I'll come on to it on one of the case studies in a moment, but there, you know, the, the, the certain industries or certain uh, bodies that will only work with certain organisations, you have to have the right accreditation, you have to have the right badges, and it's, you know, it's not easy to get to, the ISO and, and soccer in particular. So if you haven't got that facility to offer your client, it's, it's, a, it's an opportunity that may have passed. Well, piggyback ours, use our, use our experience, use our standards to help grow your business. <clears throat> okay, the badges one. So here's some of our customers that work with us today, and these were predominantly ISVs. You may recognise some of the names. Um, one in particular, our product, EFI, um, EPS, moved into. So 
this is a huge um, worldwide print organisation. You may or may not know all progress uh, uh, the, with progress under the hood. Um, we've been working with them, I think, four to five years now. Um, we've understand, we understand the application. As I mentioned, our, our technical people learn the application top to bottom. And what we've, what we've started to do now, we've gone so far up the stack, we're actually triaging their first and second line support calls. Last year, we saved 400, we got four, 450 of their first and second line support calls. We were able to triage for their customer. What's that meant to them? Well, it means they can focus on their business. It means they can look at their own application, they can offer enhancements, they can listen to where clients are going, can look at competition, and actually build their business out. And some of our clients, which is our customers' customers, that are all sat on the Ice Court platform today. <clears throat> okay, there's a couple of quick slides now, probably. That's just going to run through. Um, I've been doing this four or five years, and it's going to run through a lot of the reasons why people are moving away. Um, some of them are kind of obvious, but some of them, you know, you may hear from your your clients or yourself what you've seen. So, I blast through these relatively quickly. You know. Your hardware uh, or section of it needs changing. It failed, an immediate issue. It's beyond warranty, rising risk. Do you re-warrant? Do you get new equipment? Your business grew and current, uh, current solution cannot deliver the performance you need. It's a business constraint. You know, th it's either through a granite growth or it could be a merger. Um, so you've got all the pressures coming from, from, that, from that side of things. You have downsized and no longer have a team to manage it. Well, we've got, we're application ready, so we can dive in and help there. Key personal persons are left for company, leaving you unable to manage it. Person that we need is on holiday this week, or long lead time for replacement. And that, especially with uh, constraints on equipment and supplies, we've seen a, a, quite a big spike in that recently, where people can't get the equipment they need to site in good time. Cloud will prevent all of that. A couple of other software. OS is out of date. We saw that we had this morning session, you know, that, that obviously we, we all understand where, where software is moving and, and versions could change. Have a, have a stood up ready POC alongside your existing production area to test. You know, test it first, removing all, um, removing all risk. Database version is out of date, as mentioned. Um, around the end of life, you know, rising risk issue all the time. Will our application still work to the level we want it to? Software cannot, cannot provide the performance needed on the current system, you know, another business constraint. SaaS versions of the same application offer newer features that, can be, uh, that cannot be delivered on premise. Push out latest applications, push out latest updates, push out latest feeds uh, of, of your application. And finally, SaaS versions of the application offer a more secure roadmap, given the world is heading today, security updates. Okay, a couple more. Uh, so security. So security has become a major factor. Because of GD GDPR, based in the UK, uh, the potential fines has become a critical, to, to critical business driver. Your data must be secure. Because of risen cyber attacks means the risk to your business has risen, and a good security me methodology has proven very expensive to implement. We've been through this, we've done this with many, many partners. Lean on us for that type of, of help if need be. An event occurred where a clear backup DR scenario would have saved both financial and reputational damage to the country. We've got all, a whole plethora of different uh, disaster recovery and backup solutions available. Again, as per conversation earlier, this can be you know, for a short-term fix or a long-term. And, so, and security access to a range of home workers has provided a real challenge. I think you know, we, we saw that over the last few years um, where home workers couldn't get all details they needed we can get around that. And the last piece on this section, um, business. New types of sales may spike to performance needed, uh, need, needed and response times. Um, exceptions for online business are dropping. People are less patient, so performance must be able to expand rapidly. Absolutely. Uh, remote working has radically changed how the company needs to, its system to work. And your business runs in cycles, and you need a number of users with access to flex within that cycle. I did allude to that earlier. You know, there are quite some quite seasonal businesses, especially in the warehouse industry. Um, what you don't want to be doing is paying a fixed fee for a, a period of time where you can actually pay for only what you use. So, a couple of customer success stories. We haven't got much more to go through. A couple of customer success stories. So Wentworth Computers, this was a really, really, this was actually my first, uh, first European client we, we onboarded. Um, 
So Wentworth Computers are uh, uh, timber merchants um, that, that sell, sell, their, sell uh, an application which supports timber merchants in the UK. And actually, I've got a couple of uh, European clients as well. So um, why they chose IS Corp? As a, as a business, we needed, to, we needed to offer SaaS solution to clients. We're delighted with the results so far, having chosen IS Corp as our cloud partner. The two technical teams worked hand in hand, building out and testing our SaaS environment, and it's, and it's now ready. IOSCOP immersed themselves fully, uh, immersed themselves to fully understand our technical offering and, and therefore been able to provide us support to our clients all the way to the application level. Furthermore, they have been able to offer us a fixed cost per user. We can therefore focus on types, uh, these type of SaaS clients as it removes uncertainty normally associated with, cl with cloud. And they fully endorse us, <laughs> otherwise I wouldn't have put them on the screen. But um, the, 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 big, the big takeaway from this is, uh, so Wentworth Computers could only offer um, an on-premise solution before we engage with them. Now, the biggest, but forget all the other issues we raised, the biggest issue with that was the cost meant, realistically, the only business they could take is 35 users plus. So all of a sudden, the industry they're working is, take, is taking a whole massive chunk of the market away. <clears throat> Please. Yeah, of course. So, so, so again, so can I communicate the average cost per user? Absolutely. So with Wentworth, with Wentworth Computers, we looked at the on-premise solution, and the on-premise solution would be to around 35 users. That was the minimum number of users to make it commercially viable. We took the, the application and the hardware that required, we put it into our data center, we broke it down, and we worked at a cost per user. So we supply them a cost per user, and they then can supply their client. But furthermore, what that meant was they could actually start picking up two user, four user, 15 user business. So individually, there's a cost per user that Wentworth know, they know their market, you know, they understand their market, they can actually you know, know what they, they can sell for. And we actually, they, and they, they then use our resource to, put, to, to share their application into client. And again, it goes back, you know, they, they haven't got to be driving around the country and, and doing support on site and that type of thing. And what it's meant is it's meant it's whole, opened up a whole new channel to them, which they couldn't deal with, uh, they couldn't sell to before. Um, yeah, great, great set of guys. We did have quite a, um, <coughs> an interesting conversation at the beginning with them. And I've just written TCO over all of this because the managing director and owner and the technical guy were on board, couldn't wait to go. The financial director, absolutely not. Um, so what we had to do here was we had to build, um, and we've got a total cost of ownership calculator. So we'll take any business and we'll look at what it costs per user on site today, all in, and we'll break that back down. And I guarantee you our, our costs will show a saving total cost of ownership versus going on premise. Took me a while to convince them, <laughs> uh, we'll say, and lots of driving up the motorway, but we got there. Um, and to, to your point, sir, it's, it's, it's about offering a fixed cost. And, you know, it's like anything, the more, the less, right? The more, the more users we can get on, the more users they get on, uh, the more we both make. Okay, Cortec. Only a couple more now, guys. Um, so Cortec success story. Um, Stuart Dewey, I think he may be here tomorrow. I was hoping he'd be in here today, but he's not. Uh, when a new client comes with a range of challenges and requirements to provide our Cortec paper industry ERP solution, on a fully serviced cloud platform was very big and unfamiliar one, and they'd never sold cloud. Their biggest client of 20 years needed to go cloud, and they were gonna walk away from Cortec. And we often find it's the ISVs are very interested in going cloud, but in reality, it's only when a client wants to go cloud they, they actually consider. We set off on this journey making a thorough assessment of technology in the market. In the end, the choice of IS Corp as our private cloud partner was simple. No other provider was able to offer us the fully managed service that we needed or the support and advice we all, uh, that we wanted. The experience has been 100% positive. So just before we engaged with Cortec, they moved to Amazon. Uh, they created uh, their own environment within Amazon and um, they, they, were, they were offering their client you know, the, the consumption of their application. A couple of issues they had was, one, they couldn't offer an SLA because the SLA that the client was need needed to the application level wasn't covered with Amazon. It's a huge grey area that they took, a risk, they took a risk on. And furthermore, they couldn't control costs. So AWS you know, billing is, is like, a, like an old phone bill, if you remember, you know, back in the day, phone bill for any of you that work with, um, with Amazon. And they could have no control over it. You know, the client wanted to, to consume something a certain way, 
it had to be turned on. So they had a major problem where actually they were losing money on the hosting element of the project. And furthermore, they were, they were quite, a long, uh, quite a long way from it. So it was just a case of almost actually offering a, 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 a plug in the wall, here's the data, be it, you know, here's the data and here's the, um, the grunt from the wall, as it were. So we kind of ripped that up and started again. Similar, similar process, we engaged with the technical team. We understood what the requirement was. We actually, the, the customer, that's a German customer of, of theirs, um, wanted to add a few bells and whistles at the last minute, as customers do, um, which was a little challenging, but we got there. Um, and what we found now is that you know, they've now got the application. We've got a, a, a standard gold disk, which is about to 80% of their application. When they get a new customer, they spin up a new environment, and they do the last 10, 20% to make it customer specific. We've now got four or five different clients with these guys on board. They've even moved their own internal infrastructure to, to IS Corp as well. So yeah, really good success story, and it's something that you know a customer of 20 years that wouldn't have, wouldn't have been able to stay with them if they didn't move to cloud. <coughs> and the final success story is, is a company called Impala. Um, Impala are an Irish company that offer ticketing, parking tickets. So if anyone's from Ireland, do apologise. Um, parking ticket solution. So similar, we met Impala at a webinar well, probably 18 months ago now. And I said to, I was chatting to a guy by the name of Albert Keating, who's the MD. And we'd done the Sassify Your Open Edge application. And he looked at me like I was an alien. He looked at me like, you know, he just didn't, what he had worked and, you know, it was robust. It was, and he didn't believe we could take his application to the cloud. Well, we have. Um, essentially, what it was, if you, if you think about traffic warners going around booking tickets, they're big, clunky Handheld devices, they go around and take tickets, they go back to the office, download the data, and then people would get the fines. There was a lot of issues, there was a lot of data being lost, there was physical, there's a lot of different caveats where you know security was an issue as well. So we took the application, we took it off the handheld, we made it a, 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 an app, an app, true application via Apple and indeed Android. So the traffic warnings in Ireland now can use mo their mobile phones to, to take the data. It's all live, it's all instant, and everything's securely hosted. Now, what there's a few different things this means. So there's 32 councils in, <coughs> in Ireland, and around four to five years ago, Impala serviced about eight to 10 of them. They were slowly dropping off as cloud computing was, was, was going up, up the rail. He's now up to 21, and we're looking to get more on board, board with him. We've gone really deep with this guy. We, you know, we physically take support calls for second line support calls for them, um, and the rest of the team over there. Um, and his words, you know, I'm not sure if he'd have a business if he hadn't moved. This is, this is his words. Um, a few other things as well, you know, they've got six different software engineers, support staff in Ireland would have to drive around to the county council premises, a traffic warden couldn't use an item or couldn't get the data off that he needed in a good time to, to, to pay the ticket. He would have to drive around or one of his support guys would have to drive around um, Ireland to try and fix, fix the issue. That, that's alleviated now. You know, they've got six guys that are actually building the application and promoting the application. They've got a second application coming down the, the tracks about to land where people can track if there's potholes in the road. They've got a third application which is going to be for fly tipping. So someone's fly tips in Ireland, they can track the fly tip. So all these things would not have been possible if we had to move to cloud with Vias Corp. So almost done, you'll be pleased to hear, I'm sure. Um, so I just want to the last bit pieces again. So why is, uh, why, uh, why is Corp's managed secure private cloud? Some water. So reduce the capital burden of carrying assets and equipment. Refocus resources on the business, not IT functions. <laughs> Flexibility. Um, operationally agile, you pay as you go. Scale up, scale down on demand. High availability, we can go as many nines as you guys need to go, or your clients need to go, more importantly. And any, any available from anywhere, and we've got full, true, follow the sun support. And anyone you ever speak to in IS Corp will be a full-time IS Corp member of staff. Backups, disaster recovery, kind of obvious, but you know, it, it gets forgotten, I assure you. Uh, guaranteed backups across multiple sites, uh, robust, disa robust disaster recovery across uh, multiple geographical diverse sites. Um, and again, I alluded to it and touched on it, we have, some, we have some clients that have standard backup and disaster recovery with us, but there's certain times when they're doing huge application upgrades, they may want to up the level of, of security and, and disaster recovery so we can turn it on and off and obviously pay in the same way. 
Security and compliance, you know, it's, it's huge, as we all know. Uh, industry leading security and compliance, we, we understand compliance top to bottom in, in pretty much every sector worldwide and every country as well, because obviously every country is slightly different. And we've got data protected uh, in tier three plus facilities. All the equipment's our own equipment. It's all at the latest or latest where it can be. Fresh hardware brings one of the fresh hardware pieces and software. You know, it's all of our physical and equipment. And we'll always run the latest where we can. Just again, it's just alleviate that, you know, one more line of, of potential issue. And business impact. I've touched on this. You know, you can act faster, the powers go service, be more competitive. Um, and you can also get, you know, from an award to production much, much quicker. And finally, um, so Wires Corp, we're application aware, we're an extension of your team. 24-7, 365 worldwide. 99% of what we do is help software companies, companies sassify or cloudify their applications. We offer platform as a service, security as a service, compliance as a service, and a full concierge, concierge service to help onboard your clients. I'm going to stop talking and ask if there's any questions. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So which technology do we use? Yeah, from a client perspective, either or. So they can use a Citrix or, or into the desktop. From our side, complete total v VPN connectivity. So it's just, yeah, direct connection. Is that okay? But we can, we can be... We've got lots of different ways of del delivering, and there's you know different different routes. We don't use the same vendors as well for security. So, does that answer the question? Sorry, madam. It depends how big your opportunity is. <laughs> <laughs> um, absolutely, yes. The, the next one I think is going to be Finland, actually, um, because we've got a very large opportunity in Finland. But we do work very we, in, in terms of Switzerland. We do work with a lot of insurance companies out of the US. Um, a lot of them have got Swiss. Um, that's, yeah, it, 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 in reality, you know, if the need's there, we can very quickly spin up DCs. The, the Amsterdam data center um, was a, a three or four week from start to finish for, for a particular client in the first instance, and now it's grown organically. It was a, it was a bit, more pre bit of pressure as well because European uh, mainland presence. But yeah, it, yeah, but please speak to us afterwards. If there's something specifically in Switzerland, we absolutely can. Mm-hmm. So highest, sorry, the highest level of servers or services? Services. services. We, so in terms of applications, we've got six, actually seven now, DBAs on staff. So from a progress perspective, we, we cover. We understand progress inside out. We partners of progress. We don't stand on their toes. If their engineers are working with you, we, we kind of step away, but we understand progress from top to bottom. When it comes to the, the full application, we go way beyond the progress OE, OE piece. We understand your specific application. Um, we've recently done it with a gentleman over in the corner, Bill One, um, where we've understood their application. Yes, it's, pro it's, it's progress, but we like to understand what really happens, what it means to an end user. Then That way we can then take the first and second line support. We're not saying, our bit's working, good luck. It's a case of making sure that we're in it together, um, you know, we're, we're, we're fixing problems before they're a problem, if that makes sense. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So, uh, you are, <clears throat> my understanding is now that you are offering also a managed database. So yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, progress. Uh, but we, we cover all for, for obvious reasons. So we, our, our primary focus is progress. It's where we start. It's what we know and love. Um, we've had clients that have moved away from progress, and we've gone with them, and we've helped them with Oracle, for example. Um, very large client we're working with at the moment called Temenos is, is in that transition period at the moment. They're working with a, another vendor. So yeah, we absolutely cover all, all, all mainline vendors, as you would imagine, and we've got clients on our platform that cover that. And, and very happy to, um, you know, under an NDA, happy to show you who, who and where, where we can. Obviously, security, we have to be a bit careful who, what the information we share. But yes, is there a particular? No, no, it's just uh, also you have maybe you're talking about only progress. Mm. You have other, you have a system that you just like, you know, you have integration. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, and, we, and we, we fully understand that. It, yeah, it's very rare that you just find progress through and through, isn't it? So yeah, for, we, yeah we can cover all of that. <clears throat> Hello. Uh, so do we use Docker, did you say? It, again, it's, it's again it's customer specific. So, but we, obviously, progress we know inside out in terms of yeah, we, it's, it's customer specific. We got a technical guy here, which will talk more about what we do and what we have done. And we've had a situation recently where we've run two different types at the same time to see how we can help client. But yeah, that's yeah. Please reach out to us and let's put you in touch with a technical person. But absolutely. Yeah, build one. Great guy. Anything else? Your sample with this, uh, Impala, yes. Technology is behind it's oh, progress open edge. Yeah, there are, it's, we've actually, it's actually yeah, it's progress open edge from a, from a DB perspective. But there's a whole lot of different technologies as well further up the stack. Um, we've actually taken the application to, to so it can be consumed via Apple now or, or Android as well device. Um, but yeah, progress into the, is, the, is the main engine there. And the progress account managers love us because we're taking progress on-prem to satisfy licenses as well. That's where the relationship works both ways. Anything else? Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining today. I can now relax for two and a half days and enjoy myself. So thank you ever so much. Cheers. Thank you. <coughs>